Hi, my name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. A while ago, I designed uh, a whole range of outline stamps, like this one, for example, um, where you get shapes, for example, birds, leaves, snow globes, there were loads of them. Um, this is the deer, clearly. And, and then the idea was that you create little scenes within this shape. So that was why we had the masks. Um, and what I want to do to show you, you ought to check these out on the website. They're really cool. There are loads of them. And I really enjoy doing these. Um, I want to show you today how to uh, make this fantastic background, these canvas boards, and then create these little landscapes, for example, within. Let's have a look at this one and you'll see they're... Um, I'm just going to show you a couple of tricks how, with highlights and low lights, how you can build uh, this landscape within the deer's uh, body. So the first thing we need to do is the background. And this is actually done with copy paper. You know, when you, when you stamp onto canvas board, I don't know about you, but it never works very well for me. So I've developed a little trick with a wrap around and you work on copy paper and then you wrap it around the canvas board and because it's just thin flimsy copy paper when you when it dries you can actually feel the texture of the canvas board and you can see it too it makes it's so neat and it's so effective so let me show you how we'll just put them to one side for a minute and the first thing we need is to take the mask of the deer all right. We're not going to use the stamp. You could use the stamp first. If you did, then you would stamp the outline of the stag now, then put the deer, the deer mask over it. But I'm just going to go with the, the stag mask like so. And it, press it down well. It's removable. Of course it is. But what that does is if you press it down well, you create a good seal, if you like. All right, so we'll put that to one side. Then we need a blending mat. I'm not going to use the stamp at all. So then we'll use a blending mat. And then the next thing I want to do, I'm going to stand up for this. I'm going to use our little, these are great. These are these little artistry um, boxes of inks. There are four of them all together. Um, absolutely fantastic. 12 colours in each one. Very, very nicely laid out. Well worth investing in. So having a whole ink palette of loads of colours. So I've already decided which ones I want to go with. Golden turmeric. And what we're going to do now is on the blending mat, we're just going to, bearing in mind that we're working towards a six by six canvas. So if you, if you cover this area, you're only going to be using this much. And sometimes it's good to leave a little bit white. So let's just do this like so. There's no big um, skill in this. Just a couple of different colours here and there. And then I'm going to use, I think, the wild bilberry. I wonder if that's any good. Yeah, that would be nice. A little bit of wild bilberry. And I think perhaps this is quite dark and dramatic. This is called groovy grape. Let's add a little bit. Let's not overcook it, Grey. Oh, when do I? You never know when to stop, do you, with that, do you? No, you don't. Do you have voices in your head as well? Right, so now I've done that. Then what I'm going to do is take a spritzer. And this is water, and I'm just going to soak this like well, okay? So we're just going to soak this like so. Can you see that all right? All right, plenty of water, and let that run. There you go, and it starts to run, and it does an all, doesn't it? Look, so you start, it starts to chase like so. If you feel you've got a little bit too much, like I think I've overcooked it a bit there, then you can just take the colour out a little bit or move it around. And what you'll find is where there's a real bleed like this, that works fine. And where they're around the outside, it goes a bit more speckly. So what we're going to do now, right, we take this and we're going to just drop the stag straight into there. And then we'll press on the outside like so. And you can see exactly where the mask is, look. And you can see where the bleed went. And then it's pretty soaking, this one, but that's going to be so nice. Let's take this out of the way for a minute. We'll clean that in a moment. What I want to do is just where I've got those, I overcooked it a bit. 
You always do when it's live, it's weird that. Right, but this is quite good, look, because you get a really good, let me just blot it a bit. Right, and that now has to dry. And then when it's dry, then we'll peel off the mask and then we can start with the next thing. So let me just pop that to one side for a minute, let that dry. And then as far as this goes, we're just gonna clean this off and then we can continue. Okay, so for the sake of speed, let me take this out of the way, we don't need that anymore. For the sake of efficiency, uh, I've already done one. Right, here we go. I did this one earlier and this is dry now. Okay, I use the same colors, check it out. Same colors, just put in different, different places. So that's interesting, isn't it? N no two will ever be the same and that's quite, quite nice too. Right, so what we're going to do now is take, we need to remove the mask. There we go. And if it's bled a little bit underneath, don't worry about it. There you go. You've got a rough idea where the stag is. You've got a pretty good idea where the stag is. And then what we'll do is we'll pop that onto a piece of copy paper because what I need now is the outside. I need the other, the other mask. So this will be a challenge, trying to get this in place. Sometimes it goes really fast. When the, when the, when the mask is brand new, like this one is, take, it can be a bit hit and miss, but we'll get there. Let's have a look. Let me just take this off here. Oh, it's painful, isn't it? Do you want to reach in and help? Right, okay. So now I need to pop this over here. And I reckon, probably, I'll tell you in a minute which way is the best way. Right, so you don't want to lean on the paper because all the time you, you're not leaning. Can I just put my head over there? Excuse me a minute. I just want to get that in the right-ish place, like so. Because obviously there was a little bit of a bleed, but that's okay. Goodness me, it's still the same shape. Right, so that's okay, that'll do. And we'll just pop that down. And now what that does is that, that protects the rest of the artwork while we're making our little scene. Okay, next thing, we need a moon. So if we look at the, let's look at a couple of the original ones that I've already done. Here we are, look, I've got loads of them. I got carried away. Did I even show you these two or are these another two? Right, so you see we've got a moon here. So that's, that's where I'm looking now for a moon. All right, so I'll take a moon and I'm just gonna, what size do we think? That one's good. There you go. Pop that in there like that. And then I need, uh, um, I need a bit of copy paper under there to work on. Bearing in mind, this is my masterpiece. I need um, a makeup sponge and probably the best, do you know what? Hang on. Dun, 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 dun. There's nothing like a blending mat for this job. This is much better. It really is because that way I can I can put a bit of colour down, look, and I've got a, a palette going. This is much better than in, in the ink pad all the time. Right, so I've got my little colours, and I'm using the same colours on the inside as I used on the outside. That actually, it makes it very easy on the eye. It makes it quite pleasing to look at, if you get what I mean. Right, that one looks a bit ropey. Let's use this one. That's better. Okay, so I've got my colours. That'll do. Now I need my, I need my makeup sponge. And what we're gonna do next is also with black, I'm gonna use um, black archival ink. And the first thing I wanna do is, let's start with the sky. So I'm gonna get some blue going and I'll just start and you, you smear logically. In other words, you smear, you drag the ink in, okay? from the mask. So if the mask, you know, if I push up, I'm going to curl the mask. So you think about the way the mask is set. And then if you, if you want it to be really dark, hang on a minute, a bit more color. Then we're going to use a lot of blue for this guy. Then you go in and you just drag. Pound. It's not so dark. Drag from the outside. Let's go, let's change my makeup sponge around to the other side. And let's use some of this groovy grape. This is a bit extreme. We'll give him some 
feet, but I reckon this will look lovely. There we are, look, we're just going in the dark side underneath, like so. Oh, hello. Okay, and so this is how you build up your colour. And you can go around like this, and then you just, excuse my fingers, just come in and you're defining the edge, if you like. There we go. So we're just defining the edge, and I'm using blue, and I'm using the two darker colours actually to do this, aren't I? So I can go in with a bit of blue again. Doesn't matter if you smear it, it you just enjoy it, right? So I'm leaving a bit of white. I think that's worth bearing in mind to leave a little tiny bit of white. And then if you let it dry as well, what you'll find is when you go back in, let's make the feet even darker. See, just the bottoms. So this is, this is just creating a, a bit of light and shade, really. Okay, so now I've done that. I reckon that will do. Let me just check. Yeah, I think so. And then I'm going to take my black. So I've done enough of that colour. Let's take some black. And bear in mind, black, this is a permanent one. So I don't want to, I don't want to go on my artwork either, do I? So I'm in there on the, on the makeup and the black will give us that more shade now. Right, so we'll just go in there. Okay, here we go. Right, round we go. So just let me build up this shade a little bit for a moment. It, Rome wasn't built in a day. So we'll just do this. Just let me... Flick that through there a bit, and then uh, and then you can come back and have a look. See, don't do what I just did. See what I just did? Ah. <sighs> okay, smoothing it out, smoothing it out. It's all right, there's a couple of trees going to go in there, so you won't see them in a minute. And I want to take this moon away. Let me see if I've, I've definitely got a lovely moon in there. So I move the moon out of the way, and then um, I'm going to... Go in there, because otherwise, if I don't add a little bit of shade here, it will look like the deer's had a great big chunk taken out of his neck, which isn't very aesthetic. So we're just coming this side now. And because I don't want to completely cover the moon, I'm coming in from quite a long way over. and just smear over that way. Let me take a bit of the black as well from over here. And we're just smearing like that. She said, ignoring the mess down here. So right, I'm going to put the trees in front of that. Okay. Now, next thing, we'll just leave that there. I'm not sure, not sure whether I'm going to use them yet. We'll do the trees next. So in the set with the stag, there's also this beautiful tree. This is easy because it literally spans the whole area. See, that's why I wasn't too concerned about that mess. So let's use the black. Should we use the black archival ink pad to create this landscape? Now I'm going to build my picture in my head before I actually before I start. If I put the if I put the trees up there, say like up there, then I maybe have room for a little stag as well. So that's what I'm going to do. A little baby Bambi inside. <laughs> okay, so we'll just do this. I reckon this will be nice. Come on, Gray, just do the job. Okay, down. And then we're going to plant the trees. They're great. They're great. And then if we want to add another tree over here, just got to make sure that we don't cover, that we, that we don't make it. You know what's going to happen, don't you, if I don't do this. If I go like this, and I want to add another tree here, like that, I just want to make sure that I don't go... There we are. Upstairs for thinking, downstairs for dancing. Right, and now... Because this is all wet and permanent inky, we'll just, we can wipe it into the picture with a tissue and then, or we can wipe it away, whichever you prefer. We're going away. Okay, so that's that. And then I think, let's have a look. I've got a couple of deer here. I could put that, no, he's a bit big, isn't he? He's really huge. That'd be nice. Should we try it on a bit of scrap first? I, I think this will look pretty. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Right, that's the one. Okay, so that is going to sit. Should we pop him right there? Let's, yeah, I reckon it will look lovely. Oh, you don't need more than that. Less is more, less is more. Right. I mean, if push comes to shove, we can always add a bit, can't we? But you can't take it away. So do we want any colour? I think, do you know what would be really nice? There's a little flash of pink in the middle. For this, we require a new sponge. 
Mm, 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 mm. I think pink will be good. So we're going to go into this pink here and get rid of loads because you can always add it, but you can't take it away. Gosh, you sometimes get bored with hearing me say the same thing. I've been saying that for 25 years now. Right, let's have a go. So what we're going to do is just pound a bit of pink into that area. I really did get rid of a load, didn't I? <laughs> okay, right. Pink sky at night, shepherd's delight. A bit more pink. Cool, isn't that lovely? Right, don't want to overcook it though. I reckon that'll be nice. A bit too much. Stop! I say. We can always come back and do a bit more. But I don't want to overcook it. I tell you what I do think though, I think we want a little bit more blackness at the top on, on the antlers so that we've got a bit more contrast. We can also add contrast. You bored yet? We can also add contrast with low lights. In other words, around the back. When I take this off, we'll replace it with the... Right, let's have a look. Oh yeah, no, this is going to work. Right, so now we've got our... <laughs> right, let me just carefully remove this so that I don't tear it, because otherwise... It's all right, it's a bit of a hoo-ha, but look at that. Isn't that nice? Right, so we'll just pop that down there. We'll do that in a minute. There's one thing at a time. Oh, not that well. Talk among yourselves for a minute. We want to be able to use it again. I've got a better idea. Shall I show you? Just bear with me. <laughs> oh, look, this is a never-ending story. How long you got? Hang on. There is a solution. <laughs> Get rid of your masterpiece. Put that down, sticky side up. Then take your wax paper off and then you can kill two birds with one stone. And then we'll pop that on there. Uh -huh. There you go. Good to go again. And then now I think what would be really cool is if we just put a little bit of on his underbelly. Do you think we've got time to do that? Yeah, I do. Let's take this one again now. So now we're going to do, I think that we should, just a little tiny bit of darkness underneath his belly. Let's see. You up for this? See, and then you replace this one. Let's check it out. That'll do. See, and what's sometimes interesting is sometimes you get a little white echo, a little white echo, because you maybe put the mask down a little bit off, and then you get like a, it's almost like a little drop shadow. It looks so nice. Now with this, we don't want to overcook it. So I'm just, look, I'm just going to take a little bit of the black ink and I'm just going to sweep it underneath his tummy. Sometimes you think there's nothing happening, but believe you me, when you, when you actually lift the, the mask away, it's definitely got darker. Let's have a look. Let's lift his, oh yeah, there you go. That's much better. See? Straight away, it gives the whole thing more depth, doesn't it? Right, that'll do. That'll do, Grey. That'll do, Donkey. So put that down like so. And then that's ready for the next time. These can be used, they're very useful. They can be used again and again and again. Right, so we've done that. I'm just going to clear the decks and then we'll go to the next thing. Okay, you ready for the next stage? So the next thing we need to do is wrap this around, this is a six by six canvas board. So what I need to do is decide where I'm going to put it on the canvas board. And if I hold this up to a light source, I don't think you'll be able to see this, but when you hold it up to a light source, you can actually see exactly where the canvas board is going to be. Can you see that? Can you? Well done, Simon. He's worth his weight in gold, isn't he? Right, so now I can see, I can decide, do I want him up there? Do I want him over there? Do I want him bottom right hand corner? I think that is about perfect there, isn't it? About there, a little bit of, so then that way, when we wrap it, you see, it's gonna be like that. Yeah, that'll do, that's gonna look really nice. So you turn it over and then you take a pen and you make 
registration mark. So what I mean by that is just make a mark where the corners are. Okay, that'll do. And then we're going to take a pair of scissors and we'll just trim up the trim this up because we're going to wrap now. So to wrap it, this is where I know you think copy paper, are you kidding? But actually, it's best to use copy paper. Let's just trim this back a bit as well. Um, it's best to use copy paper because it's so thin, you see, it makes it really easy to wrap. And I'm cutting it just a little bit shy of the, of the registration marks because I can wrap it all in. Start making a bed the old way, you know, before they brought in those impossible to iron sheets. Right. Now, you don't iron those sheets, do you? <laughs> I'm not on my own here, am I? Okay, so now we've got this and we've got that and we've got to wrap that round it. Okay, that's easy. What we'll do is we'll take a piece of copy paper and we'll take a brush and we'll take this stuff, which is called, it's again, it's from Viva Decor. It's called Decoupage Kleber, Kleber meaning adhesive in German, und Lack. Lack is lacquer. So this is a really good, this is really good, okay? And you put it on here, you put it on the actual, on the canvas board. And then what we're gonna do is just use one of the, the only thing I would suggest is, just remember to wash the, the brush before it goes hard. Then you can use it many times. So what we're gonna do is just put a layer of this on the canvas board, on the front. When it, when you actually um, put the copy paper down on it, it wrinkles up a little bit, but don't give that a second thought because when it dries, all it's like wallpaper, all the wrinkles disappear. So don't don't worry about that. When I first did it, I thought, oh, this is a bit of a mess, but actually it comes out lovely. Right, so we'll do that, and then we'll just take a bit of clean copy paper. So I, I use it for lots of other reasons as well. I don't, it's not waste, if you like. But I just don't want glue all over the, all over my work, you see, because I'm going to do that now. So that's going to be like that, and then that's going to be like that, and then I'm going to flick that over, and then I'm going to load that onto where the registration marks are. And I know that that is exactly where I want it because that's exactly where I said I wanted it. Okay, cool. Next thing. Now we're going to do the wrap around. So I'm going to take my... I'm going to do two sides at a time. I think two is good. Right, so we'll take that side and then we'll go down this side as well. Like so. And then we'll wrap. Okay, I reckon this will do. So we've got two sides. Okay. Do the first two, then we'll do the second two. So take that off, and then you wrap like this. Cool, that's a nice, that's nice. And then when you get into the corner, look. Can you see that okay? Yeah? When you get into the corner, you just tuck it in like you do a bed sheet. Look, like that. And when you turn it over, see? It's really nice. So now we're going to do the second side, but I don't want to lay my artwork into the already. So I've put that down in the name of art, another bit of clean copy paper, and now we're going to wrap the other two sides. So round we go again, and you can see now how, how easy it is to wrap copy paper around the canvas boards. We sell these canvas boards in all different sizes, and I'm using... This time I'm using a six by six and I'm going to wrap it, I'm wrapping the, the copy paper around a six by six and then I'm going to load it, I'm going to mount it onto an eight by eight. So it makes a really nice piece of artwork actually. Right, there you go. So then we'll wrap that round there. That's not hard, is it? Okay, so that's that. You, you, you won't see all this because it's going to be sandwiched behind another... Ah, oh, don't stick it in there like I just did. Do you see what I've... Mm, never mind. It's okay. I salvaged it. And then what we'll do is... So it's got a little bit of a curl there. You can see a little bit of a wrinkle, right? 
but that's okay. It smooths away. And then we'll just sharpen the edges with our fingers like that. All done. And we'll get rid of this dirty paper. And don't fiddle too much with this. If you, if you keep fiddling with it like I am now, in the end, what'll happen? You'll get permanent wrinkles. <laughs> okay, right, this goes in the water. Lid goes back on. You've got enough for loads in here, right? So we're gonna go like that. Then I'm gonna take my, my next canvas. This is gonna set on there like that really nicely. So we'll turn this over. We'll take a piece of double-sided like so. Just go like so and take this off here. And then we're gonna use this to mount our work like that. There we go. If you want to sign it, then mount it. Always mount your work a little bit to the top, just a tad, like that. Press in the middle, and that will stick beautifully. Look at that, it didn't take long either, did it? There we are. And then if we want to mount, if we want to sign it, biros always work best on canvas, I find. Right? So we're just gonna, there we go. A grey masterpiece. <laughs> there we are, all done. I enjoy this sort of work immensely. I hope you do too. Uh, do go and have a look on our website for all the, um, the different ink pad sets and the outline stamps. If you enjoy what I do, then maybe check out my blog and subscribe to that. Like and subscribe the channel here and, uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.